Hello, welcome back. Today I'm here with a new chapter from It's a Happen, chapter third, of the Selfish Giant. Here we go. Every afternoon, as they were coming from school, the children used to go and play in the giant's garden. So every afternoon. Story begins with children and words said about children that these children while returning from school while going back home from school used to come and play in the giant's garden it was a large lovely garden the garden was large and was lovely beautiful garden with soft green grass it was having green grass soft green grass cover on it here and there over the grass stood beautiful flowers like stars and everywhere here and there others stood flowers like star and there were 12 peach trees that in springtime broke out into delicate blossoms of pink and pearl and there were also 12 peach trees are there in the garden and uh, during springtime they bore or uh, they blossom into pink and pearl uh, colored flowers that is in springtime are uh, the are uh, the trees that is the palm trees or oh, sorry the peach trees bore rich blossom of pink and pearl color and in the autumn bore rich fruit and in autumn they bore rich fruit a lot of fruits or the birds sat on the trees and sang so sweetly that the children used to stop the games in order to listen to them and the birds coming there visiting the garden sitting on trees sang used to sing or they would sing lovely song and they used to be so sweet that the children used to leave their games and come and listen to their song silently how happy we were we are here they cried to each other and all the children cried all the ch children shouted cried humans shouted or uh, they shouted that they were happy there that they were the most happy there in the garden that is that most where there was lovely and pleasant and that was the best place for them and they enjoyed a lot there one day the giant came back he had been to visit his friend the cornish ogre and had stayed with him for seven years and one day all of a sudden on the giant returned to his palace to his uh, place and was said about him that he had been away to see his friend to meet his friend or the a uh, Cornish ogre that is uh, ogre a giant from corn uh, maybe corn is something like a uh, cornwall yes uh, from cornwall so he's called he was called Cornish giant so he went there the giant went there to meet Cornish ogre his friend and going there he stayed he stayed there for long seven years when he arrived he saw the children playing in the garden and when he returned he found the children illegally playing in the garden without the permission what are you doing here he questioned them he cried in a very gruff voice in a harsh voice in a rough voice he shouted what are you doing here and the children ran away since the voice was gruff our voice was very harsh and rough so the children 
ran away from there. My own garden is my own garden. That is, my garden is my own garden, said the giant. Anyone can understand that. And anyone can understand the simple thing that one's garden is his, uh, his garden, his, uh, his own garden, and that others cannot come and play there. <clears throat> and I will allow nobody and he said that he would allow nobody to play in it but myself that is himself only only he alone can play there he said and that no one else can come and play there so he built a high wall all around it and put up a notice board and so as he announced that no one can, no one else besides him uh, can come and play there and that's why he erected, he made, he built a high wall all around, uh, all around the garden and also put up a notice board also. Hang Welcome all, this is chapter third, the selfish giant. And today I'm going to explain passage number second to you. So here we go. Trespassers will be prosecuted. He was a very selfish giant. So the giant put up a notice board and the notice board said trespassers will be prosecuted. That is the people entering the garden illegally without permission would be prosecuted would be punished and so what he said here he was a very selfish giant uh, he was selfish he was self-centered he thought only of his own happiness and not of those children the poor children had no now nowhere to play they tried to play on the road but the road was very dusty and full of hard stones and they did not like it I so now the poor children uh, were left with no option they had no other field there no other garden there where they could go after the school and spend there spend some time there happily uh, so now uh, they had nowhere to play nowhere to go and play they tried to play on the road but the road was dusty and uh, was full of hard stones it was dusty road and the road was full of hard stones so they posed threat they posed risks to uh, risks to uh, the boys uh, the children uh, as uh, they might cause injury to them earlier when they played in the garden the garden uh, the garden area that is the surface the ground was very soft the grass was very soft there so they uh, had become used to playing on the surface on such surface or playing in the garden and here uh, they were hurt when they tried to play on the road so they didn't like it or they used to wander around the high walls when their lessons were over and talk about the beautiful garden inside so when the lessons that is when the school got over uh, they since they missed the garden so much and they had no other place to go and play so they would go around this garden that is from outside they would go round the garden from outside the wall and they would talk to themselves among themselves they would talk about the garden the beautiful garden and how they loved enjoyed playing there how happy we were there how happy they were there when they used to play uh, they said to each other they uh, expressed their thoughts they expressed uh, their 
views as how happy they were when they used to play there. Then the spring came and all over the country there were little blossoms and little birds and then came spring. It was now the season of spring and spring season means lots of flowers and a blooming of uh, blooms on trees and plants so uh, all over the country there were little blossoms and little birds there were uh, blossoms there were flowers um, everywhere throughout the country and the little birds also would come uh, to those flowers they would chirp or uh, they would uh, fly they will they will fly about the tree and the plants only in the garden of the selfish giant it was still winter but in the giant's garden it was still winter the birds did not care to sing in it as uh, there were no children okay so even the birds thought it quite dull to sing there since uh, there were no children and without children everything looked quite unpleasant boring and dull and so they didn't care to sing there and the trees forgot to blossom and even the trees forgot to blossom to uh, bring forth are uh, the flowers birds and the flowers that is even they uh, forgot that they are uh, they uh, need now to come out with flowers and fruits even they had forgotten those things once a beautiful flower put its head out from the grass but when it saw the notice board it was so sorry for the children that it slipped back into the ground again and went off to sleep and once a beautiful flower a beautiful flower once tried to come out of the grass thought of just looking around so uh, the the beautiful flower lifted its head out of the grass and looked about the garden but uh, the moment it found the notice board there uh, which restricted children from entering the garden it was very upset it was so upset so uh, so depressed disappointed with the notice that uh, it it slipped back into the ground it just went back into the ground and there uh, went to sleep the only people who were pleased were the snow and the frost and only the two people that is here the author has uh, personified has uh, given the human qualities to uh, the uh, things of nature so here the season spring and uh, sorry here the frost and snow these have been given the human uh, qualities and that's why it said the only people who were pleased were the snow and frost and that's why he uh, calls them people so only people who were pleased were the frost and snow only these two were happy there in the garden spring has forgotten this garden they cried so we will live here all the year round now or oh, they shouted frost and snow they shouted to each other and said well the spring has forgotten this garden that is the spring is not coming to this garden and so and so it means that we can stay here throughout the year the snow covered up the grass with a great white cloth and the frost painted all the tree silver and now 
Uh, they covered the entire garden tree and everything with uh, with this frost and snow trees become silvery why because uh, because of this frost frost means uh, some kind of you can say solid ice uh, which is crystal in uh, you can say appearance crystal that is a uh, see-through like kind of thing so uh, they cover the entire garden now then they invited the north wind to stay with them and then they invited north wind that blows during a winter to come and stay there with them because a uh, north wind was also a uh, north wind is also a a, a friend a companion of these two and he came and he came there he reached there he was wrapped in furs and he rode all day about the garden he was uh, uh, wrapped he was covered in fur fur that is you can say um, the long hair you can say and he rode all day about the garden and then he rode all day about the garden throughout the day just kept on blowing through the garden and blew the chimney pots down and then he blew the chimney pots down he knocked down the chimney this is a delightful spot he said and he shouted that this is a delightful a very pleasing place we must ask Hale to visit Hale on a visit and then he suggested not been suggested that we or uh, we may ask or we must ask the hail to pay us a visit so the hail came so as per the request the hail also appeared there every day for three hours he rattled on the roof of the castle till he broke most of the slates and then he ran round and round the garden as fast as he could go and then he came and every day he uh, rattled the roof of the castle for three hours for three hours the hail would lash all the garden and also the castle castle tiles castle slates and then after that ran round and round the garden as fast as it could go and then he ran all round the garden uh, as fast as it could go he was dressed in gray and his bread was like ice he was dressed in gray color was gray and his bread was like ice and his bread was uh, the the air that he released was like ice. So, I cannot understand why the spring is so late in coming said the selfish John as he sat at the window and looked out at his cold white garden I hope there will be a change in the weather okay so uh, the giant realized that the weather was uh, the next weather had taken too long to to come to the garden it was really very late and so the giant opened the window or sitting at the window he looked out at his garden it was cold white because of the because of snow because of fro uh, frost because of hail and not when it was cold and white the garden was cold and white and then he finally expressed his hope that in future there would be a change in the weather 
but the spring never came, nor the summer, but there was no change in the weather taking place in the garden. The autumn gave golden fruit to every garden, but to the giant's garden she gave none. Okay, so there came no spring, there came no summer, and no autumn. Autumn gave golden fruits to all the gardens everywhere in the country. Uh, the autumn season gave um, golden fruits all over. But here in Giant's Garden, there was nothing, there was none. There were no fruits, there were no flowers, there was nothing. He's too selfish, she said. She remarked, or that is Autumn remarked, that he is too selfish. So, it was always winter there, and the north wind, and the hail, and the frost, and the snow danced about through the trees, and so, so the winter remained there, and the north wind, and the hail, and the frost, and the snow, these, these uh, elements of winter, or these friends of winter, kept on staying there they kept on living there throughout the year and they dance about the garden through the through the trees that is winter made the garden its permanent residence its permanent place one morning the giant was lying awake in bed when he heard some lovely music. Okay, so one morning it so happened that the giant was lying awake in bed. That he was simply lying on the bed. Uh, he was not asleep. He was awake. And when he heard some lovely music. And then he heard some lovely music. He could hear lovely music. It sounded so sweet to his ears that he thought it must be the king's musicians passing by. And the music was so lovely, so sweet, that he thought that it must be uh, the band of the king. That is, he thought that uh, the king's band must be passing by his uh, his castle passing uh, by uh, say his area that is or uh, they were they were just going somewhere from or uh, they were going somewhere from his area uh, from his uh, say passing passing through his castle it was really only a little linnet singing outside his window but that was not the case it was not the king's band producing that music that lovely music but it was a little linnet a little bird linnet bird singing outside his window a linnet is a song bird and this bird was singing outside the giant's window but it was so long since he had heard a bird singing in the gar in his garden that it seemed to him to be the most beautiful music in the world and it had been really a very long time since he heard a bird sing in his garden and that's why he had forgotten he had forgotten the uh, the say the song the music produced by the birds and so he mistook the linnet singing to the music produced by the king's band then the hail stopped 
dancing over his head, and the north wind ceased roaring, and a delicious perfume came to him through the open casement. Okay, so after that, as the bird started to sing there, so right away, at that moment only, the hail stopped dancing over his head. That is, it stopped rattling the roofs of the castle. Then the north wind vanished, snow vanished, only friends of winter gone away from there and only a delicious perfume came to him through the open casement. But a delicious perfume, a sweet perfume, fragrance came to him through the open casement that is the open windows. I believe the spring has come at last, said the giant, and he jumped out of bed and looked out, and then he remarked that I believe the spring has come to my garden at last. At last, spring has reached here. He jumped out of his bed to look out of the He saw a most wonderful sight. When he went near the window and looked out of it, his eyes presented him the most wonderful sight. His eyes met with the most fabulous scene. Through a little hole in the wall, the children had crept in. And what was the most fabulous scene? It was that through a little hole, a little hole uh, had, uh, say, had uh, developed there in the wall, somewhere in the wall, and through that hole in the wall, children crept in. Children came inside. They, they sneaked in, they sneaked inside the garden, and they were sitting up the branches of the trees. And uh, entering the garden here, they were sitting on the branches of the trees. In every tree that he could see, there was a little child, and the trees that were there, in every tree, there were children sitting on the branches, on their, on their branches. And the tree, and the trees were so glad to have the children back again, that they had covered themselves with blossoms and were waving their arms gently above the children's head and even the trees were happy the tree were uh, joyous they were excited and uh, because of this because of this joy because of this uh, excitement and pleasure uh, they had blossomed themselves that is uh, the trees were covered with blossoms with leaves and flowers and fruits and uh, were waving their arms gently above the children and uh, they had ra they had risen they raised their arms that is they raised their branches above the children's head that is, uh, the branches were full of leaves. That is, all the trees had become green and they uh, uh, become colorful at the same time because of the blossom, because of the flowers. The birds were flying about and twittering with delight and the flowers were looking up through the green grass and laughing okay so everyone was excited everyone was happy everyone was delighted the birds were flying about now birds were flying about 
uh, from here to there, from one side to the other, uh, twittering with delight. And they were twittering, they were chirping in delight, out of happiness. They were chirping. And the flowers were looking up through the green grass and laughing and even the flowers had come out of the grass or say they were looking through the grass and laughing even they were pleased it was a lovely scene the scene was lovely the scene was pleasant only in one corner it was still winter but but he found that a corner of the garden still had winter there like so it was the farthest corner of the garden and in it was standing a little boy so what he noticed that the the farthest and the far end of the garden had still winter there and there stood a boy and that part of the garden there stood a boy the boy was there still there was winter that was quite surprising so or uh, what we uh, was there let's see uh, it was uh, so he was so small that he could not reach up to the branches of the tree and he was wandering all round it crying bitterly so the reason why there was still winter because of the small the child was so small was too small to reach up to the branches he could not climb the tree or climb up the tree he could not reach up to any branches and he was just going round and round the uh, tree and crying he was also crying bitterly bitterly crying and that's why there was still winter the poor tree was still covered with frost and snow and the north wind was blowing and roaring above it and because of this because uh, the tree did not get the uh, get the say association of a child to it did not get the touch of the child the child was not pleased coming near the tree and that's why there was still snow and frost and even the uh, west even the north wind blew there climb up little boy and set the tree and it bent its branches down as low as it could but the boy was too tiny now the tree said climb up little boy the tree appealed the tree pleaded the boy to climb up and uh, not only not only it said a thing but it lowered uh, the branches its branches as low as possible still the boy was too tiny for it still the boy could not climb the boy could not uh, climb up the branches could not get hold of the branch any of the branches there and the giant's heart melted as he looked out and as he saw the small child unable to climb up the tree and there was still winter because of that his heart melted uh, seeing the seeing the trouble of the little child how selfish i have been he said now i know why the spring would not come here he said now he realized his mistake he said that he had been very selfish and said that now he knew why the spring would not come to his garden now he realized his mistake he realized why or the uh, spring would not come to his garden I will put that poor little boy on the top of the tree and then I will knock down the wall and my garden shall be or the children's playground forever and ever and then 
as he said he will just fast he will go down and put the child help the child sit on the top of the tree that is top on the top of the tree branch and then I say top of the tree only and then he would go near the wall and knock it down and uh, from now the garden that is garden uh, will be children's playground forever and ever then uh, he decided that uh, from now on his garden would be for the children and they uh, it would be their playground forever and from now on there would be no restrictions uh, on them or to them he was really very sorry for what he had done he was very sorry he felt he felt really bad for his for his actions and whatever he did that he did not allow the children to come in uh, so for his action he was very much sorry so this is all for now thank you go so he crept downstairs and opened the front door quite softly and went out into the garden okay so as the giant found this small boy a small child there at the far end of the garden and was unable to climb the tree or the branch that hung very low so uh, the giant took pity on the child small child and crept downwards and he moved downwards uh, slowly and carefully and opened the front door quite softly and then he as he reached downstairs as he came downstairs he went to the door opened it quietly and softly and went out into the garden as the door was now open he now moved into the garden but when the children saw him or oh, they were so frightened that they all ran away and the garden became winter again okay so he now started to move into the garden and here the children playing there they found the giant coming approaching and they ran away from there being frightened being scared of the giant they ran away from the garden that is they left the garden and went out of it and as the children moved out of the garden as the children left the garden and with them only are the spring season or the season also left the pleasing season also left the garden uh, that is the spring uh, only and it was winter again that is winter return to the garden with the leaving of the children or with the going away of the children from there only the little boy did not run for his eyes were so full of tears that he did not see the giant coming okay so all the children left the garden they moved out of the garden but only this small child did not run because his eyes were full of tears and he could not see or the giant approaching the giant coming and the giant stole up behind him and took him gently in his hands and put him up into the tree and the giant this time moved very quietly stole up that is moved quietly behind him because uh, he realized that if uh, if he could know if he uh, would come to know of his presence then he too would run away from there go away from there so he moved very silently and quietly uh, and walked up 
behind the child or say he went up to the child there and then he took him gently in his hands then he picked up uh, the small child in his hands and put him up into the tree and next thing that he did was he put the small child up into the tree and the tree broke at once into bluesome and the birds came and sang on it and the little boy stretched out his two arms and plunged them er, plunged them round the giant's neck and kissed him okay so as he put him up into the tree the tree instantly broke into bluesomes that is instantly there appeared the flowers the flowers appeared there all over the tree and the birds to return and they is they came and they sang all sitting on the branches of the tree and the little boy now the little boy being happy stretched out his two arms he extended his two arms and Flunge them round giant's neck and then he threw his two arms round the giant's neck and kissed him and the other children when they saw that the giant was not wicked any longer came running and then when the children found that the giant was not wicked any longer that is when they realized when they found out that the giant was a giant or uh, that that is uh, some change that the some change uh, say came over a giant or or there or there took place a change of the heart of the giant those children who ran away from there they came running They returned to the garden, running back, and with them came the spring. And as the children returned to the garden, and with them only the spring season, the season of spring also returned. It is your garden now, little children, said the giant, and took a great axe and knocked down the wall. Now, as he found the children playing around, a return as they return. Uh, he said uh, he announced it now he announced it loudly that this is your garden now that is this garden now belongs to you and then taking up a great axe that is taking up a big axe axe is a tool garden tool uh, that is used to chop uh, chop wood and all so he took the great axe a great uh, axe and knocked down the wall and then he knocked down pulled down the wall broke down the wall and when the people were going to market at 12 o'clock or they found the giant playing with the children in the most beautiful garden they had ever seen and when our people were going to the market at 12 o'clock they found the giant playing with the children and they also found for the first time the most beautiful garden they had ever seen because before that or oh, they could not see the garden so now as they found the garden there were blossoms that, that there were flowers all around so they found the garden to be the best garden they had ever seen all day long they played and in the evening they came to the giant to bid him goodbye so on that day for the entire day that day means the first day when they played in the presence of the giant so uh, on that day 
all day, the entire day they played there and in the evening when it was getting a little dark or they came to the giant to bid him goodbye, to say him goodbye for the day. But where is your little companion? he said. The boy I put into the tree. But then as that little boy, that little child was missing from them, that is, was not among those children, so he said, where, he asked them, uh, where is your little companion? Where is that little companion, little friend of yours? He said, the boy I put, he said, the boy I put into the tree. That boy that I put into the tree, that boy whom I put into the tree. The giant loved him the best because he had kissed him and the giant had got a little soft corner for that child, had got some kind of compassion for that child since he was the first of the human beings to have kissed him. We don't know, answered the children. He has gone away. Or the children answer that we don't know, we have no idea about him. He has gone away, that is, he is gone. He must have gone as he is not here. You must tell him to be sure and come tomorrow, said the giant. Now the giant told them, the giant informed them, or the giant asked them to send this information, to send uh, to send this message to that little boy, to that little child, to come again to visit his garden uh, tomorrow, the next day, again, and to be sure that is, to be sure that again he would put him into the tree, not to be scared of him, not to feel. Uh, like that uh, he was not able to uh, climb up so he can he's not able to go up the tree so he said uh, ask him to be sure that he would help him to uh, go up the tree said the giant but the children said that they did not know where he lived and had never seen him before and the giant felt very sad and then the children those children uh, they informed the giant that they did not know about the child about uh, his his residence where he lived his residence where he came from and had never seen him before and that or uh, that uh, small boy or that child had never seen before to them there or here and the giant felt very sad as the children informed him about that child he became upset because uh, he had grown some kind of compassion some kind of love for that um, and that child Every afternoon, when school was over, the children came and played with the giant. And now, from that day on, it had become a routine for the children. When the school got over, they would come to the garden and they would play with the giant there. But the little boy whom the giant loved was never seen again but the giant always missed that small child he had uh, he was never seen again the giant was very kind to all the children yet he longed for the little friend and often spoke of him though the giant loved all the children now he was very friendly with all of them yet Oh, he, his heart always craved, his heart always wished to meet that small child, that 
or that small boy and he would often speak about that boy about him how I would like to see him he used to say he would often say how much he loved he wished to see him again years went by and the giant grew very old and feeble okay so and now the time went by and the crew that is the giant grew very old and feeble and with the passage of time the giant grew old and feeble that is a lot of time had gone by and so the giant had become old and also feeble that is weak he could not play about anymore so he sat in a huge armchair and watched the children at their games and admired his garden so as he could not move about so easily so and he could not play with them consequently so he sat in his huge armchair and watched the children at their games he sat in his huge arm armchair, big armchair, and just he watched the children playing games in his garden. And as he, as he was watching the children, as he watched the children playing in his garden, at the same time he watched and admired his beautiful garden. I have many beautiful flowers he said but the children are the most beautiful flower of all okay now he said he admired his garden he used to admire his his garden always and then uh, he said i have many beautiful flowers he said that well i have got many beautiful flowers exceptionally good flowers in my garden but the children are the most beautiful flower of all but these children are the most beautiful flower and the best flower of them all one winter morning he looked out of his window as he was dressing now it was winter again and on such a winter morning he looked out of his window as he was dressing as he was uh, wearing his clothes he looked out of the window it was winter he did not hate the winter now for he knew that it was merely the spring asleep and that the flowers were resting okay so earlier he used to shut his doors and windows but now he left them open or he opened them every morning and as the window was open he could see the garden and and he saw something there and what he says here about his philosophy uh, the philosophy that underwent a change that is earlier he hated winter but now he knew that winter is merely a time in which spring remains asleep spring goes on to his sleep he goes to his sleep and that the flowers uh, were resting and that the flowers also go and they also take rest so winter is nothing but resting season for uh, spring and also for the flowers suddenly he rubbed his eyes in wonder and looked and looked it certainly was a marvelous sight and suddenly his eyes met something something unusual and so he rubbed his eyes and wondered and looked and looked he kept on looking at this thing 
at the at the particular thing that amazed him. It certainly was a marvelous sight, and that was the most exceptionally, uh, or say that was the uh, beautiful or the marvelous sight, the wonderful sight. In the farthest corner of the garden was a tree quite covered with lovely white blossoms and on the same far end of the garden there was a tree, there stood a tree and that was quite marvelous that was covered with lovely white blossoms. That tree was covered with lovely white blossoms because in winter uh, you cannot expect, you cannot, uh, you don't find such things because everything remained covered with snow and frost. So in such season, you, you cannot hope to find blossoms in trees. So that was there, that, that is, blossom was there. The tree was covered with blossom, lovely blossom, lovely white blossom. Its branches were golden and silver, fruit hung down from them and Underneath it stood the little boy he had left. Okay, so then he observed the tree, the color of the tree, and the tree trunk, the branches were all golden color, golden in color, and the fruits were silver. That is, they were silvery in color. And to his amazement, to his surprise, underneath it, under the tree, stood the little boy he had left. And under that tree, the same tree, stood uh, the same little boy that he always wished, that he always, you know, always craved to yearn to meet. Downstairs ran the giant in great joy and out into the garden and out of joy he ran downstairs he went downstairs running uh, in great joy and also he went running out of his uh, out of his gate and into the garden he hastened across the grass and came near the child and he rushed across the garden that is across the uh, grass that is across the garden and came near the child he reached on the child he came near the child and when he came quite close his face grew red with anger and he said who had dared to wound thee okay so as he reached close to him his face grew red in anger that is out of rage his face turned red why because he found something unusual and he said who had dared to wound thee that is there were some wound marks injury marks on his body and so the giant became very furious he said who had dared to wound thee? Who had dared? Who had got this courage to this courage to wound thee to hurt you? For on the palms of the child's hands were the prints of two nails, and on the prints of two nails were on the little feet because he found two imprints two marks of nails on his palms and two nail marks of nails nails on his welcome all this is chapter third the selfish giant and today i'm going to explain passage number eight which happens to be the last passage from this chapter so here we go who had dared to wound thee? cried the giant. Tell me that. Agus said the giant repeated the same question. He wanted to know desperately uh, as who 
had given him those wounds, who caused him those wounds, those injury marks or those injury, who hurt him. He wanted to know the name of that person. I may take my big sword and slay him. He said, I will go take my sword, big sword and slay him and will kill him. So reveal me the name, tell me the name. Nay, answered the child. The child answered in negative. He said, no. But these are the wounds of love. He said, no, these are not the wounds, not the marks caused by the weapons, any kind of weapons. But these are the marks of love, the wounds of love. Who art thou? said the giant. And a strange awe fell on him. And he knelt before the little child. Now in wonderment in surprise in amazement he asked the question as he wanted to know as who art thou because those words cannot be said by an ordinary man an ordinary child and he wanted to know as who was he and a strange awe fell on him and a strange kind of amazement he was puzzled, hugely puzzled, and then he knelt before the little child and uh, in wonderment, overwhelmed with surprise and wonderment, he knelt before the little child. And the child smelled, smiled on the giant and said to him, and then the child smiled on the giant he smiled at him and said you let me play once in your garden today you shall come with me to my garden which is paradise now he informed he said once you allowed me to play in your garden and today I shall take you to my garden that is I'll take you to my garden and my garden is that of that uh, which is known as paradise that is my garden is paradise so I will take you to my paradise I'll take you to paradise and when the children ran in that afternoon they found the giant lying dead under the tree, all covered with white blossoms. Okay. And that afternoon, the same day afternoon, when the children returned from school and they entered the garden to play there, they found the giant lying dead under the tree. They found the giant dead and was lying under the tree, all covered with white blossoms. And he was all covered his body was fully covered with white flowers so this is all and with this we have come to the end of this chapter thank you